Without further ado, let's go straight down to the field of play for the introduction of the athletes for semi-final number one for the Recurve Men's Individual Tournament of the first stage of the Hyundai Archery World Cup. On target number one, representing Turkey, Mete Gondos. <laughs> On target number two, representing Old Serbia, Ryan Tayak. <laughs> the fine judge for this match is Marit Haas. Well, he's a superstar here at home in Antalya, based here, in fact, in Antalya. To practice, Mete Gazos is the reigning Olympic champion. Got a bronze in last year's Honda Archery World Cup final. And a two-time stage winner. He's definitely the favourite for this, but goes up against another medalist from the Olympic Games, Rio 2016 team bronze medalist here, Ryan Tayak. Will be the Australian to get the match underway. Starts with a nine. And this young man here, just 22 years old, is a superstar in Turkey. And that start of a 10 has really got the crowd behind him here. Close one there, nine might be a ten. Quite definite styles, aren't they, Brian? Tayak throwing his bow around a little bit, trying to guide the arrow into the middle, whereas Mete Gazos looks calm and controlled. Nine points. Well, he's trying to stay very relaxed, uh, Ryan. Tayak, the Australian. Good grouping from him as well, but a real shot here and an early lead for Gazos. I knew that one was drifting out to the left, so a 28 for Gazos. Provisionally, he's got the two set points, but she said, Nikki, the second arrow from Tayak deserves a measure. Pot's calling that up, so it looks like a 10 for Ryan Tayak. Tyler scores up, 28 apiece. Well, there you have it, the measure did become important. Tayak, cheery smile at the end of that. That last arrow, far left, the closest one to us from this shot, is uh, a little bit of a wild one by Gazos' standards. So it shows that even the nerves can get to him, and who can blame him? He's on home soil. He's got the whole of the crowd here pretty much on his side. But Tayak has kept him honest. Perhaps a little less pressure on the Australian. One apiece after set number one, and it will be Tayak to get set number two underway here in this men's semi. Nine points. Looked a more steady shot, didn't have to throw the bow arm around, but still high right. Nine points. Both gone right, makes me wonder if there's a change in the condition at all down at the target. Nine Sort of a little movement with his front arm just before we release then. Well, they've made some adjustments, both of them. Perhaps the wind has dropped right off. Right 
first arrow, left second arrow, right in the middle for Tyak. First two the same for Gazos. Can he find the middle of the target and keep this one all square? Yes, he can. Nothing between the pair of them after two sets, 28 apiece, and they pretty much followed each other. So, I mean, it would suggest that the wind dropped off a tiny bit because it's coming across from right to left as they look down the shooting line. Yeah, it may well have done. Um, there hasn't been too much wind here in this <laughs> stadium this time around. We expected so much wind in it to cause havoc uh, on the beach, but you know the arrows of the recurve are arcing. They're going above the barriers. You can see down there, right-hand side. So it can be affected if there is a breeze coming off the coast. Well, all square between Tyak and Gazos. Not much wind, but it's changeable. And they followed each other in the second set. All square at two apiece. Oh, and Tyak starts the third. They've dialed in at the same time, haven't they? There's nothing between them at all, is there? Trading tens now. Just as soon as you say that, Gazos opens the door. Tyak has a chance here to steal the lead. And he's done it. He stepped away from that one. Sometimes that means that they're not happy with it, but I think that was a confident step away. He's gone 4-2 up against the favorite here in this first semi-final. Gazos, professional as ever. Slaps the third arrow in the ten. The grouping was great from uh, the Turkish archer, but just one crept out to the left and into the nine. And he's got a bit of pressure on him now. Ryan Tayak, who has never taken a medal on the Highlander Archery World Cup stage. In fact, his last individual medal in a, a full international was back in 2014. Is leading this one. And I've got a confession to make. I'm not certainly not favouring, but. We love Ryan Tyak. He has been part of the uh, World Archery commentary team in the past. Uh, a very delightful young man, and he's right out here, and he's got a massive chance here of guaranteeing himself a medal against the Olympic gold medalist. Yeah, he has. He's shooting really well. You know, he is an Olympi Olympic medalist himself. We know he can do it. Um, yeah, he's been out of the game for a little while. He's been around for such a long time. I mean, even 10 years ago, he was on the circuit, so he's the underdog here, really. What can he do? Well, he's in the lead. All the pressure is on Mete Gazos, the Olympic champion from Tokyo 2020. He trails 4-2. He's got the crowd behind him here on home soil. He's going to get the fourth set underway. <laughs> Oh movement of that arm, but going into, into the 10. Mete with a big Bokondo swing as well. Knew it was going to go left, tried to help it out, but now into the 8. Opens the door for Tyak. And he's gone into the eight. Wasn't happy with that one, but still affording himself a smile. Trying to stay relaxed and composed. Wants a better arrow, gets a nine. The door is still open. Tyak needs a ten to beat the odds and make it to the final here in Antalya. 
He's gone into the nine. So they share the points in the fourth set. Tyak still with the advantage, leads 5-3. Uh, boy, oh boy, a little bit of pressure for both of them now. And the anxiety getting up to both of them as well. But you'd rather be in Tyak's shoes, right? Well, yeah, he's done everything he needs to do now. So he's either going to go, you know, he's either going to win this or go into the tie. So it's a little less pressure when you're 5-3 up. Whereas Mete has to win outright this next set to force the tie. So the pressure really is on Gazos to, you know, get these points he needs. But he shoots first an opportunity to put the pressure down. Yeah, that is preferred position for most archers, shooting first, so let's see what he can do. Oh, Tyak there having a little laugh at himself after shooting an eight from his second arrow in that fourth set. Gazos looking very serious indeed. You get a little glimpse at the arc, the arrow flies down from that replay. Start of the fifth set. Can Gazos get a clear win and force the tie break? The Turkish archer Shoots first, 5-3 down. Still leaves the door open. Well, this is very much in Tyak's hands. Another Bo Kondo, <laughs> you know, helping that arrow out to get it in the 10. Mete looks the better archer here. The shots are nice, but they're just not going in there for him. A 10 here, and you really have to fancy the Australian underdog. Oh, he's drifted out over into the eight, so we're all square here. Down to the final arrow. Can Gazos get it in the middle? He can, but it's too high, and it's three nines for a 27, and a nine required from Tyak to get perhaps the biggest surprise here in Antalya. He looks happy. He's got the nine, and he's beaten the Olympic champion. 27 apiece in the final set is enough for Ryan Tyak to beat Mete Gazos on the Turks' home soil.